Okay, let's talk about the CLEP College Algebra exam. And if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you are preparing for the CLEP College Algebra exam, and that is excellent, as the CLEP program is fantastic. I mean, it's one of these things where you can save a lot of time and money, and those are, of course, very precious resources that we all have. Uh, but uh, the CLEP College Algebra exam is not to be confused with the CLEP College Mathematics exam. That's a much more advanced uh, CLEP exam in terms of math. So we are talking about college algebra. And specifically, what I have here is a nice practice problem that you should be able to solve uh, if you are fully prepared for the CLEP College Algebra exam. So, of course, I'm going to go through the solution to uh, this equation here in a second. But, uh, if, uh, but if you know how to solve this, go ahead and pause the video and uh, put your answers into the comment section and we'll see how well you've done. But uh, I'm going to get to this particular problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And over those years, I've constructed many uh, online math courses to include a very, very comprehensive CLEP College Algebra test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video, but super comprehensive. A lot of people have successfully used that course uh, because there is a good amount of math you're going to need to know to pass the CLEP College Algebra exam. And you don't want to wing it because the benefits of passing that CLEP exam is just too um, awesome. So let's get into this problem here. And um, again, I'm going to do it, but I want you to kind of think about how you solve this. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what type of equation is this. So what are we looking at here? Okay, well, hopefully you recognize this as a polynomial equation. Okay, this is a polynomial equation, and I'm not going to be able to teach about all these various aspects as I'm kind of commenting on this particular equation because these are a lot of big topics that you're going to have to um, really study within a CLEP College Algebra course uh, or a course review. But um, this is a polynomial, which means what? Well, here, this happens to be a third degree polynomial. Okay, so it's the highest power of this polynomial. So the highest or the degree uh, in terms of a polynomial equation, the degree is how many solutions that, polynomials, that polynomial equation is going to have. And this right here, this concept is called the fundamental theorem of algebra. It's not important that you know that, but you do need to just be able to see this and be like, okay, this is a polynomial equation, and I need to um, uh, find three solutions. Okay, that's what the fundamental theorem of algebra basically states. And those solutions can be real numbers or imaginary complex numbers. Okay, so hopefully that's a good uh, starting point for a lot of you that don't remember how to do this problem. So, well, what do we do next? Well, the fact is, uh, because this is equal to zero, this sets this um, particular problem up very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what you want to do. You want to factor out the GCF, okay? Now, I'm telling you what to do because I want to see if you have those skills to actually do this. I'm kind of walking you through how to do this problem. So go ahead and factor out the GCF here. And the GCF stands for the greatest common factor. But uh, let's go ahead and do that now. So that would be 2x. Okay, I can factor out a 2x um, uh, from both of these terms right here. And that leaves me 2x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So let's just double check that here. If I take this 2x and I multiply it by this 2x squared, do I get back to 4x cubed? Yes, I do. And then if I multiply this 2x times this uh, uh, 1 right there, do I get back to 2x? Yes, I do. Okay, so at this point, what do we do? Well, we have uh, two factors. We have this thing and this thing. When we multiply them together, the answer is 0. Okay, so this is something called the zero product property. Let me, let me go ahead and uh, show you right here. If I have a times b and, that, and a times b is equal to zero, there's no way I can multiply two things together, two or more things together, and get an answer of zero without either this uh, a being actually zero or b being zero or both of these factors being zero. Okay, we can't multiply these things together and get a zero without one or both of these factors being zero. So what we're going to do is actually set the, these respective factors equal to zero. So I have 2x is equal to zero, 
and 2x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So again, this is something called the zero product property. And now we want to go ahead and solve these respective equations. Okay, so here, uh, the first one here, 2x um, is equal to 0. Super easy. Divide both sides of the equation by uh, 2. I get x is equal to 0. So that's one of my three solutions. Okay, but I need two more. So let's go um, over here and solve. So I'm going to move 1 to the other side of the equation. That leaves me with 2x squared is equal to 1. Now I can divide both sides of the equation by 2. I get x squared is equal to 1 half. Now I need to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root of x squared and the square root of 1 half, I'm going to get x is equal to positive negative square, uh, the positive negative of uh, the square root of 1 half. Okay, so these are my other solutions right here. And uh, let's clean this up a bit here. So what this is saying is that one uh, solution is the positive version of the square root of 1 half, and the other solution is the negative version of the square root of 1 half. But technically, you wouldn't want to write your, your final answer this way. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is something else you're going to need to know how to deal with on the CLEP College Algebra exam. The square root of 1 half, how should we actually write this? Well, what we want to do is break this up this way. We have the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. These are what we call properties of radicals. So uh, the square root of 1, we're talking about the principal square roots. This is going to be 1. Okay, then I have 1 over the square root of 2. Well, I don't want to have a radical in the denominator. That's kind of a no-no, so I can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a square root of 2. Okay, this is how we uh, we call this rationalizing. So now I'm doing this right here. So I have 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is going to be the square root of 4 or 2. Okay, so really uh, these roots we can write this way. Okay, so x is equal to positive negative square root of 2 over 2, and x is equal to 0. So this is 1, 2, 3 roots to this polynomial equation right here. Okay, so if you got that right, that's pretty good, okay? Uh, especially if you knew all these various factors about that. But again, this is only one aspect of what's going to be on the CLEP College Algebra exam. There's a lot more material that you're going to have to know. But if you got this right, that's excellent. But if you didn't get this right, definitely don't panic. Um, what you need is a good uh, kind of study plan and uh, the motivation to work hard. Okay, so remember, taking the CLEP College Algebra exam is optional, uh, and you're doing this because you kind of want to get ahead. So if you want to, you know, earn these credits, which is fa a fantastic goal, you're going to have to put in the work. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. A couple thoughts here. One, if you're truly serious about wanting to pass the CLEP College Algebra exam, definitely check out my math uh, CLEP College Algebra uh, test prep course. Again, it's going to be in the link in the description of this video. And also uh, consider subscribing uh, to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, uh, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. And a lot of those videos uh, can help you prepare for the CLEP College Algebra exam as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the CLEP College Algebra exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.